April 22nd, 2021. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 231 of You Can Bet on That. Hi, everybody. Welcome to You Can Bet on That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. Now, Mike, we whine quite a bit on this show about San Diego sports. With good reason. Uh, sure, you know, the Chargers, what, they were bad, and then they left, and the Padres, you know, have always been bad, and when they did go to the World Series, they embarrassed themselves. But since our last episode, something pretty major happened yeah. <laughs> in San Diego sports. On April 9th, Joe Musgrove threw a no-hitter for the Padres, and it was the first no-hitter in their entire history as a major league team. That's going back to 1969. Right. 52 years ago, we're in the middle of the 53rd season, 8,205 regular season games, 40 postseason games, no no no-hitters. We really thought, well, is this going to ever happen in our lifetime? And it finally did. Yeah, finally. (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, you know, almost our whole lives we've been waiting for it, right? Yep, right. We have been waiting. I'm laughing because I immediately jinx the Padres by telling you that even if the season is a bust, at least we have this. <laughs> yeah, you did. And say of that. course, they went from being ranked, you know, as the second best team in Major League Baseball by MLB.com to now being, you know, a 500 team. And since the no-hitter, they're sub-500 in their all right, record. All right, all right. Stop your whining. <laughs> You're not going to hear any whining from me okay. tonight about <laughs> the Padres because this was huge. I mean, it really was, right? You know, well, there we were, were a lot of firsts. It was yeah. the first no-hitter for the Padres ever. Yep. It was the first no-hitter in that stadium. Yeah, Globe Life Field. It's yeah. a new stadium it's for a Texas. It's new stadium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the first no-hitter. It was the first no-hitter of the year. Yep. <laughs> uh, for, I mean, any baseball for, team. Right, yep. Well, this was huge for Padres fans everywhere, and it was especially special for you and me because Joe Musgrove graduated from the same high school that you and I did, Grossmont High School. Right. He's he's a local boy. He was born right here in El Cajon. Right, Yeah. Yeah. His parents still own a coffee shop. Yeah. You know, and think of it. I mean, just because he was born here doesn't mean he's going to play for the Padres, no. or that he'd throw a no-hitter. Think of how many high schools there are in the country, Mike. <laughs> right. And he, he went to the one In the world, I, because there's it, <laughs> well, the major sure. leagues <laughs> has all kinds of players from all over the world. So that makes it extra special for us. You know, Mike, seriously, I mean, this this was a big one for me. Right. So yes, the, the Padres have been disappointing since that point, and you know their hitting's been terrible and what have you, but honestly, this is huge. I'm not concerned so much about the rest of the season <laughs> and the Dodgers. I still would like to make the playoffs. Sure. It would, I, it, I'd like to beat the Dodgers. It would be nice, but honestly, for as much as, as we whine, for as much as I whine, right. I'm going to be uh-huh. whining a lot, a lot less it's, because it's this also, was a big one. It's also funny that the guy who does it is a hometown boy versus all the great pitchers who have come through San Diego. <laughs> yeah, that, he's a hometown boy with a career losing record. Right now, he's got a losing record. <laughs> well, yeah. for, the, for his career, <laughs> That's what I mean. Losing that's record. what I mean. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just funny that it was him yeah. of all people. I mean, yeah. it could have been, you know, God, Jake Peavy. I mean, we had oh, so many great sure, pitchers over sure, the years. Sure. So anyway, we did have a lot of one hitters. A lot. Oh, going we, we into have, the eighth and ninth. Yeah, yeah we, for sure. We, yeah. We've been we've, so close. close. We've and been, up to only a couple of years ago, no batter had hit for the cycle. That right. only happened a few years like back. And a couple of years you back. You know, I thought, oh, well, is that ever going to happen? So two big monkeys off of our Padre backs. <laughs> and yeah, the World Series, that's the last thing really is the World to Series win. To win a World win. Series? Yeah. Or, well, let's let's start small. How about we win two games of a World Series? Okay. We'll go for that. <laughs> that's okay. We lose we'll four to two. Yeah. And then, you know, and then maybe four to three. And then it's four to four. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they cancel the World Series forever. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you're not going to hear any more whining from me. At the end of the show, you know, when you do your little segment, if you want to whine about them a little bit more, go ahead. But I will not join in. 
<laughs> okay. All right. You're going to leave your whining to other aspects of yeah, life? Correct. Yes. Yeah. I may whine throughout this episode, just not about the Padres. Yeah. Just yep. so everyone knows, all last week, all Mark told me is, is that he doesn't take sports that serious anymore. Yeah. Right. After, and But that was after that the no-hitter. That was no after hitter. the no-hitter. Yeah. So now you don't take it serious. So me, I've I been, don't let it get to me. Yeah. He said he doesn't let it get to him. Right. So I've been informing him of all the <laughs> terrible things in sports that I come across. That's true. He tweets. <laughs> he texts me every day something new. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> I am full of it. Yeah, you sure are. <laughs> All right. Well, we got an email from listener Scott. I'm just going to read it here. A few years back, I was playing a slot machine at the Hard Rock in Tampa when I noticed the woman a few machines down had her hand in her purse and was moving it around. She must have seen that I was looking at her. So she explained, I rub my lucky rabbit's foot for good luck. Then she said, want to see? Before I could respond, she opened her purse to reveal a real live rabbit and darn if she wasn't rubbing its foot. Sure seemed strange to me, but honestly, if she'd hit a hand pay, I might have headed to the bunny farm to get one too. Anyway, it made me wonder about some of the stranger things you guys have seen involving animals or anything else. Mike, have you seen any, maybe some animal things, strange well, the, things? Well, the strangest animal thing I saw was out at Harris Rincon a few years back when mm-hmm. we saw a guy playing a slot machine with a small dog right. perched on his shoulder. Oh, that's right. Like on a parrot. Sh- yeah. <laughs> like a parrot. Like he was a pirate with a parrot on his shoulder, yeah. except this was a small dog. And I don't even remember what the breed was, but it was one of those real... Yeah, probably some chihuahua well, or chihuahua yeah, mix something or something. very yeah. small. I mean, we've got a little... Five pound dog ourselves, and <laughs> but getting her to stand on my shoulder would be rough. This dog is just perched there, and he wasn't holding it. Right, he was, it was, he was yeah. playing the machine. It was just sitting there. Now, was the dog facing the machine or facing away? I think the dog was actually whispering in his ear, like <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> that's, that was a good one. Yeah. Hit, hit the spin when I say yeah. when I when I yip a little, a little bit, bit. That's the, when you press the, the button. The spin. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the dog actually had some like electronic device in it and it wasn't even a real dog <laughs> that's right yeah. some mechanical dog oh it was a fembot <laughs> except <a> dog bot <laughs> dog bot well okay that is the strangest thing you've ever seen yeah, Dr. dog bot is the strangest thing i've ever seen we'll have yeah. to start selling those they won't work of course but no. we'll just sell them on online want to beat the casino it'll be some ad get the dog, get the bot. dog. wait what <laughs> Beat the casino with a robot dog? I'm, honey, come figure this out. So Harris used to be dog friendly. I don't know if you can have dogs in the rooms anymore or no, not. No, they, they used to be very dog friendly, and yeah. they changed that. I'm sure there are circumstances where you can bring a dog in the casino. Well, I see dogs right. all the time there right. still. But it's not supposed... Somebody told me it's not as friendly as it used to be okay. as far as like <laughs> keeping them there and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I understand that because... You yeah, know, it's a dog. I, I do too. It is. I, I think it is strange how many people bring the dog into the casino and have them sit there when they aren't helper dogs. Right. You know, legitimate helper, helper dogs. dogs. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, it's my, it's like my companion dog, and you know, it helps me emotionally. It's my right. emotional." And I understand that, but that's kind of what all pets are, right? right. Or, you know. And, <laughs> but I understand there's right. some people who, with a lot of anxiety, and it helps them. And I really haven't seen any. Issues like have you ever heard like no, a barking dog in, no. in the casino? I, I just wouldn't like our dogs, I wouldn't bring because oh, yeah, I think it'd be torture on our dogs, <laughs> yeah, the, honestly. The noise and everything, oh, the and... noise, the people buying in mid roll. I mean, <laughs> stuff like that. Our dogs would go absolutely <laughs> insane. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the come out. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, I, our dogs would not enjoy a casino. Yeah. And there's too much going on. I mean, you have oh, to yeah, have the yeah. right kind of dog. Oh, right? absolutely. I mean, absolutely, you have to have the right kind of dog, not just as an owner, but just, you know, not everybody likes dogs. Some right. people are afraid of dogs, right? right? And you've got a right. big dog walking through the casino. Uh, not too freak long some ago, we out. saw a fairly good sized dog walking yeah. through the casino. I mean, yeah. a bigger dog. And I thought, wow, that dog's a little big to be in a casino. Yeah. Because, you know, some people might freak out. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I haven't seen any other animals, though. Although I'm sure, I can guarantee you, 
that there's been somebody there with like a lizard or some kind of or whatever. like a, be- a bird, like a real yeah, uh, like tame a, bird, like the yeah. You know. No, I think I have seen birds. Okay, maybe not here, but like in Vegas, I think I have seen people with like birds on their shoulders. Okay, like you know, right. uh, and they're trained. Right. So they yeah, just, they're not. Yeah, they, they don't just like fly there. around the casino. Yeah, and right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on back. <laughs> You like it when you're at SeaWorld or something. And yeah, right. The, bird, the bird bird's shows. up at the top and it flies down over everyone's head. <laughs> That's right. Lands right in the middle of the roulette wheel. <laughs> right. Usually I get the dump right on my chips. Just <laughs> boom. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I'm not so worried about COVID as I am this bird poop. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, those are the only two animals I think I've ever seen. I've never seen a cat. Have you? No, no. Well, people don't take cats. I mean, if you see a cat in a casino, it probably got in there on its, it's own. It's probably and it's feral, scared, right? You, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. It's trying to find a way out. Yeah, a cat, I don't know. No horses. I don't think I've ever seen a horse. No, mm-mm. no. Yeah, that's that's it as far as animals. I mean, I guess okay. dog is the most common animal. It should be in some show. What's the most Jeopardy? Uh, the most common animal to attend craft sessions. <laughs> what is a cat? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, because this is really the important thing. Did these animals have clothes on, or were they nude? Mostly nude. Okay, so yeah, another uh, nude. nude sighting for you. Yeah. We recently took the clothes off our dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first, youcanbetonthat.com, and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. All right, let's move on to some voicemails. First up is Nick. Hi, this is Nick in Kalamazoo. Uh, I'm a little late giving you a trip report, but my wife and I went to Atlantic City for the first time right before the end of March. We stayed at Harrah's. Uh, we had some free nights with Caesars and decided to try it out there and found the whole place to be interesting. Like my other reports about Vegas, finding food was difficult. We were there uh, Sunday through Thursday, so non-peak times, but there were some places that were only open on Saturdays or Something wasn't always available if you wanted it to. But for the most part, you could find some food. You might have to make some decisions. Craps tables were all over the place, mostly 10 or $15. Since there were some games on Sundays from March Madness, most things were $15, which I wasn't accustomed to. One of the other things that was strange is that due to COVID, New Jersey enacted that you have to be seated while playing a table game. So all the craps tables had chairs, which was very strange. A lot of us just kind of kicked them out of the way so we could stand and play as we wanted to, but they were there in case someone told you had to sit down because of regulations. So that was different. I was able to find a few $10 tables and play those because 15 is a little out of my wheelhouse, but to be fair, I actually did better at the $15 tables than the $10 tables. But we found the whole place to be interesting. I think something I would go back to once things get back to normal so I could really make a determination. I mean, it's not Vegas. It doesn't have any of the off-strip properties that we like to go to, the cheaper, smaller, local places. But it was still a pretty good time. And we spent most of our time at Ocean and Borgata and, and had quite a good time. I appreciate the podcast. Thanks a lot. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Nick. This is the first we've heard about chairs being required at table yeah. games in Atlantic City. Had you heard that before? No, I haven't heard that. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have chairs here at Harris Rincon. We're kind of spoiled. Uh, yeah, the craps tables and, have chairs. Yeah, and they recently got some new ones, which are funny because they're more like high chairs. I feel like I need a bib. and I, know. It's ter- It's actually uncomfortable, right? It, they kind they of uncomfortable. don't fit well at the no, craps table. No, they're too yeah. high. The old chairs were much better. Yeah. I mean, they, they look nice. Yeah. They just don't, they're not comfortable and there's no Cheerios. No one brings Cheerios for you or anything. No, uh, anything like yeah. that or a metal tray even yeah. to put the Cheerios, Cheerios on. on. Yeah, yeah make a mess. I. Yeah. It's weird. It, it is weird. <laughs> All right, well, glad Nick had a good time. We're going to hear from him again in a little bit. Next up is our buddy Robin from Anytime Gambling. Well, hi, guys. This is Robin. I just wanted to let you know that I'm driving on my way to Foxwoods. It's been a long time talking to you guys, and I've got a lot to say. But uh, this is just going to be a brief message, brief little teaser, because I'm on my way to Foxwoods because it's my 65th birthday today, and I'm going to try to get some special slot play. And I just wanted to comment on a couple quick things before I call back. But loved your point about ADT, 
And I uh, just want to remind people that uh, even if you go in and swipe for entries and then leave, it's considered a no gambling day. Or if you go in and you get your, oh, geez, I don't know, your uh, blanket, well, that's considered a no gambling day as well for many places. So uh, up here in uh, New England, most casinos, well, all casinos, all nine of them, are still pushing protocols as they were a year ago. And they are having lots of trouble getting people back. The limit is now up to 40%, <laughs> but they're still having trouble, especially in Massachusetts, getting past that 25% capacity. People aren't coming back so quickly up here in New England which is, you know, typical of the area, probably. Okay, so now I'm going to call back and let you know how well I did and touch on a few more topics. Glad to, to say hello, and I'll be back. Ta-ta. All right, we're going to hear back from Robin here pretty soon. Oh, and you know, Robin is now host of his own podcast, the New England Casino and Gambling Podcast. He started it in March. So, nice. Yeah, take a listen to that. All the information there about what's happening at the New England Casino. So um, Good. You know, one thing that he reminded me of, and this kind of goes back to Nick's call too, one of the frequent players at Harris Rincon was telling me that last Tuesday, he was there, they had one table open, it had been $15 during the day, Okay, but like early evening, they changed it to $25. Mm-hmm. So it's the only table open, and he said, sure enough, after about a couple hours, it cleared out, and at 9 o'clock, nobody was playing. Wow. But they still kept it at 25. Yeah. And he asked somebody, you know, well, can't we just go back to 15? And they, no, no, it's 25. And it's weird because they've gotten to this, you know, they raised the limits, and now we have extra seating there. So right. Like we of, said on a recent episode, it, right. they now allow four on each side. So, so eight, eight people. people could play. Right. And no one's playing. You'd think they'd lower it to 15 to get yeah. a few of the regulars. He was actually playing like the shoot to win craps. Uh-huh. And he said, well, you know, I, I was playing that because I wanted to play lower limits. But yeah. they now they were firm on 25, yeah. I guess, you know, for evening. But it was a Tuesday evening, right. not, you know, a Saturday night. Or yeah. It would be, yeah. If it were weekend, maybe I could understand. Understand it because right. it's very possible that any moment, you know, somebody, somebody could come up, right. start playing, and then it fills up. Exactly. And sure, right. sure. But he said it was empty for about an hour. Mm. I just thought that was funny. Yeah. And it kind of goes into the, you know, they're still strict with their restrictions in New England, but not so much here. Right. And the limits are higher. Yeah. So, well, we were worried too that this might happen, that when things start getting back to normal, that the limits would stay higher than they were before all right. this, right? Yeah, so. it may take them a while to lower them. Yeah. And it may take them a while to open more tables, too. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of get in that mode of, like, we're only going to have two tables. Yeah. You know, hopefully they're paying attention to the data that's coming in, <laughs> you yeah, know, right? and they're making smart decisions. I can't say that that's absolutely true, but I can only hope. I understand, too, it is kind of hard because... I think here in San Diego, things are going pretty good Mm COVID-wise. But then, you know, you read some article, oh, they found a new variant and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And there's somewhere, Indiana was having a problem, I guess, again recently. And so, you know, maybe California is like, well, when's our next (laughs) problem coming? Yeah. Yeah. Well, since Robin brought up ADT, let's talk about that a little bit more. So he was saying that at some casinos, this is definitely true. If the casino knows that you're on property for any reason. Right. They're going to charge you with a trip, whether you gamble or not. So if they know you're there, okay, you didn't gamble $0 for that day. Right. And and they have to know that you're there. So that could be, yeah, sliding a card through a kiosk, buying something, you know, at the fast food or at the gift shop. Right. Any reason. Now... Just based, uh, we haven't done any scientific (laughs) research into Harris, Southern California, but my offers only dipped once I started playing with my son on the stadium gaming. You were gambling less per session. I was gambling less. However, Mark, I thought about this after we talked about this. Uh We don't know. Your offers... Only got less after that, but we don't know if maybe you would have been getting more before had you not played free play one day only or something. Because one of the very high limit players at Harris asked me once what my free play was. And right. when I told him, he was shocked. 
He's like, oh my God, that's so low. Really? Yeah. And he said that he got a lot more than that. Okay. But him and I gamble about the same. All right. And I'll tell you afterwards who it is. I don't want to mention yeah, his sure, name. Sure, sure. But he told me that. And afterwards I thought, you know, he only comes and plays. Right. He only comes like maybe once a week on a Saturday night and plays heavy. Right. I've never, ever seen him there midweek yeah. or so... We thought we were getting a lot, but maybe it would have been even more. That is possible. What I was going to say is we are constantly going up there and not gambling, right. either just to get free play or since I'm up there, oh, I got my free play. Since I'm here, you know, I'm going to use my food voucher to get a hamburger right. or something right. like that. You eat, you've so, eaten your lunches there. Sure, right. right. So maybe, you're right, maybe that is hurting. The reason I didn't think that was the case was like I said, mine dipped considerably, and right. it was only after I started doing the stadium gaming. Right, but well, that might have had but an influence. It, but it might have had. You yeah. know, say you were getting a hundred dollars, and all of a sudden it went to forty. Yeah. Well, but maybe before you would have been getting two hundred had you just yeah. gone once a week and played your regular amount. You're absolutely and right. And again, else. again, we haven't <laughs> tried to yeah. look at this scientifically. No, and when we've but, asked people, nobody knows. Of course, nobody's nobody no, knows. Nobody you knows. Can ask, well, Mike, remember uh, episodes back. Our buddy Marty contacted us and said, right. hey, me betting on the sports app right. from home is affecting my ADT. ADT. And we thought, well, that can't be right. And once we looked into it, it was. sure enough, it was. Yeah. And it's like, what? So I, I think casinos screw themselves on that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's stupid, yeah. his sports betting at home. Yeah, right. Because that encourages <laughs> you not to do it. Yeah. Or not to go to that casino because you're not getting much free play, right? Yeah, well, certainly and, don't use their sports book. Yeah, you no, know, use like, another get one. Get Circa it's, or something, right? right. Yeah. It's just stupid. And another thing, like even with us, like let's say you go up there and you have your lunch or you get your free play, yeah. it shouldn't count against you because... You know, what if you lived in the area? Now, yeah, we do right. drive it's, aways, but what if we lived like in Escondido and it was like a five-minute drive? We'd be there every single day getting our free play. Yeah. And if it got low enough, we'd stop going there and we'd go somewhere else. It the, just doesn't make that's sense. That's why I was saying ADT I don't think is a good way to determine how valuable a player is to a casino. Right. But that's what they use. Yeah. Well, anyway, getting back to what Robin well, was saying, it's probably safe to just assume that any time the casino knows you're on property, they're going to consider that a gambling trip. Right. No matter whether or not you actually gamble or how not. How stupid so that may if sound. If you don't gamble, it's zero dollars for that day that'll get averaged in. Yeah, how stupid that sound. It's probably true. Yeah. And I think, I complained about this to you the other, a week ago, customer service at some of these casinos, even at Harris Rincon, where we're regulars. Mm. I mean, you know, everyone who's there knows our names. Yeah. The cashiers all know our names. <laughs> you know, all the cocktail waitresses, they know our they know us by name. Yeah. And still some of the service that you get in some of the areas is so crappy. Right. So crappy. And I'm not talking about from dealers or cocktail waitresses. I'm talking about from management yeah. and cashiers and places like that. You're still treated like it's the first time they've ever seen you. Right. And we can't really go into details as to what you're talking yeah, about, right. but I know what you're saying. It's it, 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 yeah, it's, it's such a bad way to run a business. Yeah. And maybe some of these casinos who get in trouble or have issues, you know, maybe they ought to get management who know how to run a business. <laughs> I mean, it's I know it's gambling's a little different. And you there are some security concerns. Well, you, and things you know, like that. What you're but, arguing is for the old days when the mob ran everything. Right. <laughs> and, and <laughs> when it wasn't this corporate, you know, right. bottom line kind of thing. <laughs> right, exactly. And it's so funny you say that because just today one of my patients who's a psychiatrist so a professional guy, mm -hmm. he, he likes to go to Vegas every once in a while, and we started talking about it, and he said, he's the exact same age as me, mm -hmm. like we're like a few weeks apart, okay. and he said, wasn't Vegas so much better back <laughs> when the mafia ran it? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you're, you know, you're right, it, yeah. it was, and he said, yeah, when the corporations took over, Vegas got crappy, it's not even fun anymore, that, that was his take. Yeah. He said, I still like to go occasionally, but it's not as much fun, and he was saying too, and it's not as safe. <laughs> It's and it's kind of true. You know, nobody messed with a mob, right? Yeah, right, I mean, right, right. <laughs> right. 
What I do like about things now is I'm not going to be taken into a back room and have my thumbs broken. Right. Well, That's you, one nice thing about you, the new casinos. But you probably weren't going to have that happen anyway. No, you're right. I'm not a you counter. I'm not, not a, a counter. cheater. You weren't going to cheat. <laughs> right. And I, that's what I told the, the, my patient. I said, look, you know, in the old days, you only got in trouble with the mob if you were doing something you weren't supposed to do. Right. If you were just a regular guy who went and you're playing blackjack and having a good time, you, your chances of having a problem were slim, right? <laughs> right? I mean, maybe if you got drunk, they'd throw you out, but right. they weren't going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they wanted customers and it was safer. You felt safe in the casino, right? <laughs> now it's like, I don't know. They're worried about the bottom line. They're not worried about you yeah. in particular. Yeah. yeah. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about, I think, last week, too. You know, they want their buffets to make money. If right. they're going to have a buffet, it has to make money. Right. Otherwise, they're not going to have a buffet. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. The mob guy, he didn't care how much you ate. He <laughs> wanted you at the blackjack table. Yeah, what... They wanted to get you in the buffet, fed and liquored up and back to yep. the table. Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next call. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Mark calling from Florida. I have a situation here playing Pi Gal at the local casino, and I just want to see what your take on this would be. It was a face-up Pi Gal game, and I had a terrible hand. I had like a ace-high Pi Gal with maybe a king to put in the uh, low hand. The dealer had a straight with a uh, joker and what they did was that they put the straight as using it as a two so it was ace through five is a straight and then their low hand was just a nine seven so seeing that i couldn't set my hand any other way but i thought i had a push and the um, first lady who played had a push and then about that time, the pit boss walks by and says, oh, no, you have to reset it this way. And he ended up putting the ace up top, and then she had a three through the seven straight. And, of course, that beat me, whereas the hand was already played for the first player. So I kind of grumbled there that I didn't think that was correct. That if we set our hands, we're stuck with it, especially since they uh, you know, allowed one hand to be played, and then he changed it. So... I'm just wondering what your take on that would be. That uh, just seems they could have done a little bit better customer service there and just allowed that hand to stand, at least since one player had already been played. Hey, enjoy the show. Just wonder what your ruling on this would be. Thanks a lot. Yeah, this is an interesting situation. Let, let me repeat what he was talking about right. so everybody's clear. Okay, so the dealer basically had a joker in her hand, and she used it to make a straight, ace, two, three, four, five, the joker was being used as a two, a deuce. Right. Right? And then the remaining two cards were nine, seven. She set that up incorrectly. What she should have done was played three, four, five, six, seven, Use using the joker, the joker as, a six. as the six, right? and then play ace nine in the two-card hand. Right. Clearly a better hand set up that way. Now... Mark was saying that the lady in the first position pushed, and then they moved to him before the hand was corrected by the pit. Right. You know, the action was on Mark. That's when the pit said, hey, you said it wrong. It should be a seven high straight with ace nine in the two card hand. Right. They're saying, okay, you lose. So there's a lot to take in here. Okay, Go ahead. one of the problems is we don't know. He didn't say what that first lady had. Right. Maybe she would have pushed either way. That's a good point. She could have had, yeah. yeah, she could have had ace ten on top, right? And she would have pushed either way, right? And so maybe that was a situation where the pit saw she was going to push either way and said, "No, here, set it right." However, I am in agreement with Mark. I say once you've set a hand and you've made a determination on the very first person, you can't go back. That hand sits. Yeah, it's, it's because of that first person, right. right, having action. So that is a good point. If she would have lost, right. that first person would have lost with the new setting of the hand. Yeah. But, you know, her cards are gone already, and they've already made it to, oh, yeah, they have to keep the hand the way that yeah, it was set. Right. I would say, and again, the pit would just have to make a determination. All right, right. I'm just letting everybody know this is a mistake. Right. You know, and we're going to let it stand. Honestly, if I'm in the pit, yeah, and she does the first hand, and then I see that she made a mistake, mm -hmm. I don't even say anything. Yeah. Because the first person's already been dealt. Right, right. Let it play through. Move on. Everyone's happy. Why 
alienate all the other people right. by changing it, now, especially when probably they would have pushed, right, versus probably lost. And maybe this is what the pit was thinking. Maybe that first player would have pushed, pushed either, either way. way. right? And so they're thinking, no harm, no foul. We're going to set the hand correctly and move right. on. Right. I hope that was the case, because if that wasn't, then this is a real big mistake. Right. The, even though I agree they should just let it stand the way it is just for good customer service. Right, right. I it's, well, it gets back to what we were just saying like a few seconds ago. It, I mean... Are you there to make money? Or are you there yeah. to piss people off? Here, here's the other thing, Mike. Based on the new way that the dealer's hand is set, every player now has should have the option to reset their hand. This is face-up pie gal poker. Right. This is face-up, right. Uh, right. where you make your determination after you see the dealer's hand. Right. So, you know, maybe even that first person would have set, set their, their hand, hand diff- differently, right. right? Sure, right, right. So Yeah, we don't know what that first person had, and that does kind of hinge a little it, bit. It does hinge, but, yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, once they've set their hand and they're rectifying other people's hands, then it's done. Yeah. It's yeah. done. You can't go right. back. Now, who knows what kind of pressure the pit is under i don't know what kind of rules right you know they're worried about breaking here but right. i think he could make a judgment call in this case and say you know the yeah. dealer made a mistake action has already started around the table we're going to play it this way right yeah. and just announce there was a mistake made and mm-hmm. but you know hey and then you know what some people who push but what a loss would be oh great yeah you know good customer service yeah, you'd- nice guy thank you very much and you know have a good feeling instead why yeah, the, everyone and mad? they'll stay at the table whereas right. you know it, yeah. the and way that getting, it was it you might drive you're getting people their away. money in the end anyway <laughs> right, right? Yep. i mean yeah. so all this stuff can be avoided by just good customer service yeah kind of uh, goes back to what you were saying yeah, yeah i mean the mob wouldn't have cared <laughs> <laughs> now later they would have taken the dealer out back and yeah, broke her. Yeah, thumb. this is the dealer's the <laughs> yeah. last day at the yeah, casino, the and hopefully she can get work somewhere else <laughs> without the use of her hands. <laughs> All right, let's hear from Michael. Hey, Mark and Doctor Mike, this is Michael from Indianapolis. I call on in with a story from Indiana Grand Casino in Shelbyville. Uh, Listen to the episode where Doctor Mike kind of took down the marching soldier a little early, and I have a kind of similar experience, but not in the way that you think. I did not pull mine down early. I just marched when I shouldn't have marched, let's say. So started out buying the four for a quarter, and nothing was happening. Roll after roll, seven out, no fours. So then I went to the four and ten, and said, you know, whichever end hits first, I'll just march that direction. Well, that didn't work out either. No fours and tens. So I said, all right, I'm going to make this soldier march. So started at the six and eight for 18 bucks. The eight hit. So went to a forty dollar nine and parlayed that over to a hundred dollar ten and bought it. It hit for the two hundred and said, Okay, well, I'll just keep on marching to a two hundred dollar four. I'll take a little bit to recoup losses from earlier. So a two hundred dollar four. I'm gonna march down to the four five six. Well the shooter went ahead with another six tens after I moved to the four. So I very strongly contemplated just holding there because of how bad the four started for me that day. And if I would have just kept it at the 10, I would have been pressing it like crazy and hit a lot with six more tens coming up. So anyway, uh, feel your pain, Dr. Mike. At least you got to collect a decent amount, stop it at the nine. But hopefully next time I will go ahead and march on all the way. Thanks. Love the show. Bye-bye. Don't second guess yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially with that. Yeah. Especially with the marching soldier. I mean, honestly, he would have been better off to place all the numbers and just collect all those tens. Right. Yeah. Right. I <laughs> maybe mean, press them a little. Yeah. Bit. Maybe yeah. press them a little yeah. bit. I mean, that would have been that would have worked out way better. But if you decide you're going to do something and you do it, I guess you do it. You know, yeah. if you puss out, then you puss out. Yeah, I mean. exactly. <laughs> now, if one thing that he tried, you've actually been trying recently, too, where you bet on the four and ten, and right. whichever side hits, then that's, I go from that's there. your starting point. Right. Yeah. But I do like having both of them, whichever one hits, start from there and start moving yeah. from there. Yeah. Right? But that is where you start, either the yeah. four or the ten, right? You right. haven't started in the middle anywhere yet. I haven't have you? yet. You've but talked I, about I've it, talked I know. about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's hear from Nick again. Hey, guys, this is Nick in Kalamazoo. I was calling with a weird crap situation that I ran into. Wife and I ran down to Blue Chip Casino in Michigan City, Indiana. Haven't been there since before the pandemic. It's about an hour and a half to get there. Normally, it would be five before COVID. Instead, it was 10. They also were restricting 
the all tall small and center bets to five or more, trying to keep people from buying in for 20 bucks and throwing stuff in the middle on the $10 table or whatnot. But something strange happened. So it was one of my last sessions of Sunday night. A uh, guy was playing all tall small. There were four or five people up on it. I personally was not. The guy beside me was throwing the dice and he was on fire. He had three or four points. He was pounding the inside numbers. I was pressing. Everybody was happy. And then he had two numbers left. He had the five and the ten. He hit the ten. And then as they were changing the stick, the stick said, you're going to do what now? Okay. And he told the other stick. And when the stick showed up, he said, he's passing his dice to you, sir. And I was like, wait, what? You're in the middle of a hot roll on the ATS and there's one number left. You're going to make me throw the five? So I was like, okay, what are you going to do? So I threw the dice and I hit a three. It was the two first, and then the one, everyone was like, oh, man, it's so close. And the next one, I tossed them. I hit a two, and the second dice went off the table. And then, of course, the next throw is a two and a five for a seven. And everyone was super bummed, and we were all very confused. Why would you pass the dice when you were super hot? The couple beside me couldn't understand. I didn't understand. And then I was next to shoot since it was my turn, and then I set the point of, five Five. (laughs) i did also hit the point of five but that became the joke the rest of the night i came back the next morning was talking to the couple beside me who was still there and they were like man did you even sleep and i was like no i felt terrible i how would you do that to someone and we asked the dealer if they had seen that and she says oh that's probably so and so he does that all the time i just couldn't believe you would put someone in that position i felt terrible i didn't know what to do i wanted to turn my bets off but i was just kind of in shock and just chuck the dice. So a very strange situation. Hopefully no one ever gets put in that personally. Thanks for the great show. I always enjoy listening. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mike, we've seen players pass the dice in the middle of their roll if, say, they're on the don't or something, right, mm-hmm. and they've lost. Right. Or maybe, you know, it's the come out roll and they've thrown a few craps in a roll and they get yeah. discouraged. We've seen it maybe in, from a hot shooter if they've made their point and then they have to leave. Yeah. But, you no, know, I, not too long ago, Mark, though, we had a hot shooter who passed the dice in the middle of the In the roll. middle of a hot roll? In the middle of a hot roll. Uh, I don't remember. Th- maybe you yeah. were by yourself because I'm trying to remember. He had, made it, like, the- he had made like three points and then he passed the dice and he said, oh, I just don't think I have any more in me. Okay, but it was a come out roll, right? It a, yeah, it was a come out. Okay, that's... It, it wasn't in the middle. He made a point. Yeah. And it was like his third one, and he said pass. Okay, I've seen that. Yeah. Yes, I've seen that. But just in the middle of a hot roll, not the come out roll. Not the I don't come think out I've roll. I don't, ever, I don't think I've ever seen yeah. that. Now, so it sounds like this is something, based on what Nick said, something this guy does a lot. Yeah. And all you can think is, well, he's superstitious about the stick change, and so his way to beat that yeah, is to pass the dice. Right. It like negates the, right. the stick change, right? Well, the that's the only thing I can thing, figure. The important thing that wasn't told in this story Uh is Nick never said when he rolled that one die off the table, Mm -hmm. one stayed on, one went off. Did he ask for that same die or did he get a new die? Yeah, (laughs) Because that's probably what brought the seven out. That's critical. Yeah, Yeah. that's critical. And that's probably what brought the seven out. It wasn't the fact that the guy had passed it to Uh, you. Okay. It was that die going off. You know, yeah, sure. If it's maybe your fifth or sixth time playing craps, you don't understand that. But like us, we know that that's what caused it. All right, so Nick, apparently Dr. Mike is saying this was all your fault, <laughs> and this is what you should have expected to happen Well, in no, this I case. don't know, because he may have asked oh, you for the same know. die. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't now, know. if he asked for the same die, yeah. half the table's going to blame him for asking this for the same die. <laughs> right, exactly. And the other half is, well, smart move. It just didn't work out. And then by the same token... Half the table is going to blame him. He should have got two new die. Oh, yeah. And then he would have rolled the five, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, the five coming out on the come out after that, yeah. that's obvious. That is that, obvious. So hopefully Nick had a big time. hot bet on the five yeah. for that one. Yeah. And and after we're through with these phone calls, and when we get to the end, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to explain craps to you. <laughs> <laughs> to okay? me? To you. Oh, great. And to everyone listening, you're going to get a little tutorial from Dr. Mike on craps. Oh, boy. All right. Well... <laughs> Let's race to the end of the show then. Uh, But first, we need to hear back from Rob and find out how his trip went. Well, hi, guys. I told you I'd call back, and I had lots of things to say. So here we go. The Foxwoods Report, well, they gave me 25 points for my birthday. Not status points, but 
coins you used to buy things with. It wasn't very successful. It was a slow and torturous burn for two and a half hours, and I was glad to get out of there. So I spent my birthday with a piece of cake and a two-hour nap in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've had a lot of pie gal success lately, and uh, I was glad when you were mentioning to tip the dealers. It's such a, a very slow game and it's not very f- a lot of fun for them to actually deal. So I always put down, uh, you know, like a, a nickel down so that they're in play. And it lasts longer than other tables because of the, uh, just of the play of the, of uh, Pai Gao. There are many hotels here in New England finally opening. Encore Boston Harbor is finally open 24 hours. Protocols are still in use. I wish I would have in, invested in plexiglass before the pandemic, but then again, you know, 2020 hindsight. Quick Encore trip report. For our anniversary, we stayed at Encore for the first time. It was amazing. Best deluxe casino hotel I've ever been in. It's larger than any basic hotel room in Boston. And basic, it really isn't basic. It's a fabulous view, technology galore. It is just a great place to stay. Also, we had a great gambling trip. I played quarter, triple play, ultimate X for most of the time, and made money on one royal, but no multiply. Oh, sorry, guys. I know you're kind of sensitive about that royal thing. Um, uh, so I won't even mention the royal I had at Mohegan Sun last mm. week playing the same uh, mm. triple play, ultimate X. Craps finally opened up in Massachusetts, but poker is uh, only found in the tribal casinos and in New Hampshire. The other four poker rooms are closed indefinitely. By the way, crafts minimums are all over the place in New England. The best table minimums at small casinos are $10 at Tiverton, Hollywood, Bangor has also $10. Otherwise, it's 15 and 25 Encore has uh, nothing but $50 on busy weekends. That's the minimum. Okay, promotions. We're seeing a lot of multiplier days here instead of those stupid play-for-entries promotions that keep you there longer than you'd like to see until a high roller with a bazillion entries finally wins the prize. You know those promos. And I'd like to know just how you guys feel about those promotions. Well, maybe you are the high rollers that actually win those things. I don't know. Connecticut approved iGaming and sports betting and is looking to have it up and running for the NFL season. Meanwhile, the Massachusetts just can't get their you-know-what together because they want to do it, quote, the right way. Finally put me down for a Biloxi meetup vote, and I'm still trying to plan a San Diego trip. I thank you guys for getting me interested in Pygal Poker. It has lengthened my visit threefold. I, I just absolutely love the game. My New Year's resolution was play bigger, but play often, and uh, it has made my ADT rise like crazy. Now, I can take a breath. Stay healthy. Good luck at the dice slash card tables. I can't wait to see how that works someday. I uh, wish you well. Thanks for everything you guys do. Ciao. All right. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Robin. So the drawings that he's talking about, yes. they actually have those at Harris Southern California on the last Saturday of every month. Right. You, you get a certain well, number of points based on how much you play, yeah. and then they have a drawing. On the last Saturday of every month, your entries are from the whole month. Correct. Yeah. So it's based on how much um, points you've earned on every time you've come during that month period. Right. They do have some Saturdays where they have drawings based on just that day. Yes, correct. So, you know, if the drawing's at 11 and you get there at 9, you have very few entries. Doesn't matter how big a gambler you are, yeah. you're not going to have much in the entry pool. Yeah. And so that encourages people to get their first thing in the morning and yeah, right. stay all day. <laughs> so probably way better for the casino as far as making money. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but for the for a person like you and I, we've gone to some of those Saturdays, but we usually can't get there till six or mm-hmm. seven. Yeah. And so we have very few entries, you know, when it comes time for the drawing. But on the end of the month one, we have a lot of entries because we've had our whole month to occur points. Mm-hmm. However, we have never won. Right. Now, during these drawing days, they have a big drawing like at 11 o'clock, but they also give away smaller amounts 
throughout the day. And free typic, play. Free, all in free yeah. play. Usually it's like $1,000 every hour. They give $1,000 to five people every hour, right. which is significant. Yeah, it's $5,000 of free pay every hour. Yeah, and you've actually won a couple of those. I've won three times okay. where I've got the $1,000. Yeah. At the end of the night, they give away $50,000 in its cash. Right. Not free play, right, but cash. Right. I've never won that. And it's so funny because... People are always saying, oh, surely you've won once, because <laughs> yes. a lot of the people we know have. Yeah, yeah. And I have not. I you Well, know. and I've never won anything. No. You've won you've, the free... I've never won you've anything. You've never won anything. Even the free play. Right, yeah, yeah. right. Well, what do you think of those? Drawings? I don't like them. Okay. <laughs> I don't like them you, because you and I feel compelled to go, and then we end up there you playing. Go. That's what Robin's up, saying. Yeah. We end up playing longer than we would normally. We yeah. stay later than we would normally, yeah. and we haven't won. If I had won one, I'd say, "Oh, they're great," yeah. you know. But yeah. uh, no, you're right. We've fallen victim to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, just today. Our good friend Phil said to me, oh, I'll see you Saturday night. And I said, oh, I don't know if I'm going to go this Saturday. Honestly, I've got so much to do, work sure, and home sure. and everything. I was thinking of not going. He said, well, you know, this is the end of the month. Yeah, line. it's the f- the month And I'm one, like, yeah. no, it can't be. It's yeah. only, Today's only the 21st. And he said, no, because the next Saturday is May 1st. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, darn. So now I'm thinking, well, I got to go. You got to go. I yeah. got to go. I might win 50000 or a $1,000 free play. Yeah. I won't, but I might. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we haven't actually discussed what we're going to do this week until right now. So I, yeah. I guess we're going Saturday. I guess we're going Saturday. All right, good. You know, then the story of my life, I won't win, but I might. <laughs> <laughs> I won't win, but I might. See, another great T-shirt. Yeah. How come we're not getting these T-shirts uh, rolling through the factory here? Yeah, you could wear that everywhere. You could wear I won't. Yeah. People I won't. just look at you. They don't even question it. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I hear you, pal. I understand what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. We want to thank some people for some recurring PayPal donations. First of all, from Robin at Anytime Gambling, and don't forget to listen to his new podcast, the New England Casino and Gambling Podcast. Also, donations from Justin, Nathan, Brian Dancer, Brian and Sarah, and from Josh. Thank you very much for those recurring donations. We also got a donation from Scott, He says, this is a combo karma donation for an upcoming trip to Vegas, and just thanks for your show. And he sent us an email as well. He's going to be staying two nights at Circa and then a few at Aria. So good luck on your trip, Scott. Yeah, boy, I want to go to Circa. Yeah, you do, friend. They advertise on the Padre game, so every Padre game I see four or five Circa. I don't know that we've talked about that on the show, but Circa has associated itself with, with the, the San, San Diego, Diego Padres. Padres. Not the Detroit Tigers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not where Derek Stevens is from. The, the Padres. Padres. So, well, yeah. it's a little closer. A little, yeah. yeah that's and the true. Dodgers were probably asking, I, you know, $20, where the Padres were like, oh, give us a buck or two. We're all right. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> also, a donation from Troy had a big online craps win and wanted to share a bit of the good luck with two of my favorite dice players. I will be in the San Diego area May 3rd through the 5th to take in a Padres game and some dice rolls at Harris. Hope to possibly see you guys at the table. Yeah, definitely look us well, up, Troy. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, is it third through the fifth? Yeah, because oh. May first is Saturday. Oh, all right. Well, we may miss you, Troy, but good luck. Yeah, and and, and enjoy. Well, the maybe party. we'll see him when we go out there to collect our free play. Oh, that could be lower right. ADT. Lower ADT. Lower ADT, right? <laughs> And finally, a donation from Michael James. He says, heading to Vegas April 29th through May 4th, mainly to bowl the USBC National Tournament. My wife and her daughter, who is celebrating her belated 21st birthday, will be joining me and about 50 others in our bowling group. When I was in Vegas for the Super Bowl, I put futures on San Diego Padres and the Chicago White Sox to win their pennants. Both teams have thrown a no-hitter so far this year. That's right. I like me chances. Once again, great job, and I love the podcast. So again, <laughs> good luck on your trip, Michael. Mike, oh, I feel so bad you bet on the Padres now. Yeah. <laughs> That's my fault. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Blame, blame Dr. Mike, <laughs> not me, that. for sure. You bowl a couple 300s, and we'll all there feel better go. about exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks. At you can bet on that.com slash TV dash listings. And our list of gambling-related movies at youcanbetonthat.com slash movies. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 9512-WAGERS. 9512-WAGERS. 
or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at You Can Bet On That and on Facebook at facebook.com slash you can bet on that. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review of the show. We love getting your feedback. So, all right, should I throw it over to you, Dr. Mike, or should yeah, I just uh, end the show? Well, before I get into my lecture, I guess I oh, should God. say. I wanted to say, uh, by the way, Michael, I don't know if he saw this, but uh, one of the professional bowlers, a younger guy, on the televised bowling tournament, picked mm-hmm. up the seven ten split. Oh, really? Yeah, and <laughs> it was, it was the first. Yeah, just re- a few uh-huh. weeks ago, yeah. it was the first time on television that somebody, a professional bowler, had picked that split up in like a long time, uh-huh. many, 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 many years. Yeah, and I saw it. It just happened to see it. It was quite exciting. I'll bet. So, I mean, it doesn't happen that often anyway. No, well, but first of all, you have to TV, get in the situation right, to have a right, seven most, split, right, right, and most pro bowlers <laughs> don't right. end up in that situation right, that right, often. Right, right, Anyway, what I wanted to tell you, Mark, oh, boy, is okay. I was at the casino yes. last weekend, uh-huh. and I always tell people that, you know, because I make a lot of horn bets and prop bets on the come out only. That's true. I've seen you and, do that. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll establish a number. And then sure enough, the next number when I don't have any prop bets is like a two, a 12, a three, or an 11. All right. So you, you've so, made the bet on the come out roll right. and then a points established. Right. And then the very next roll is one of the numbers that would have won for, for right. you. Okay. I got And you. I usually tell people that you know, God, why is it one roll late? Right. It always happens. You said that, yeah. Well, there's a guy out there who always tells me, well, if it always happens, why don't you bet it? Yeah. He's a little annoying. <laughs> I've seen him. I think he stands right next to you generally yeah, at the craft table. Okay, I know and who he, you're talking and about. And he says to me, why don't you make that bet? And so then he said, well, if you remind me, I'll make that bet just to prove to you it doesn't always happen. Right. Okay, so right. The, the guy wanted to make a point yeah. that mathematically what you were saying was wrong, wrong. and he was going to put his money where his, his mouth, mouth was. He was actually going to lose money right. Right. to make to his, prove point. his point. Okay. And I said, okay, so this, you know, we've joked about that in the past, but th- this week I said, I'm going to remind him every single time ah. to make this bet. Yeah, yeah. So that he's forced to make it, yeah. and then he'll see the error of his ways. Okay, right. That uh-huh. math doesn't always work. Okay, all right. Especially in the game of craps. <laughs> okay. So the guy makes the bet, mm-hmm. and I kept track. Oh, I seem to remember this now, yeah. Yeah, it was painstaking to me <laughs> to keep track for seven hours, yeah. <laughs> because... You know, my concentration wanes. <laughs> right, sure. <laughs> and I like to have fun and, you know, making little check marks and all these sure, boxes sure, and everything. Sure. So you, you reminded him. Fun. So so you reminded him. So every time, right, as soon as a point was established, yeah. you said to him, don't forget to make, make a $20, $20 horn, horn bet. bet. Okay, yeah, right. Make a $20 horn bet. Yeah. So let me give you some statistics. All right. During the night, there were... 112 situations where he had to make that horn bet. Okay. 112 situations where he had to make that horn bet. It turns out that had he made that horn bet every time... Because he missed some of them. That's what he, you're saying. You forgot to, him I forgot to remind him I forgot to remind him or it went too fast. Yeah, yeah. We okay. didn't quite get the bet down. Sure, sure. So if he had made the bet every time, 29 of those 112 chances were winners mm-hmm. and... 83 were losers. Okay. Now, this player, as soon as he won, he took it down. So if he he made a $20 horn bet, if he hit a 2 or a 12, Mm -hmm. he would take his bet down, collect the winnings, and take back $155. Okay, so $135 profit, basically, right, from from his bet. Yeah, okay. And if a 3 or 11 were rolled... He would take it down 80 and down, so he's making a $60 profit. $60 profit. Okay, Uh uh-huh. Now... During the course of the night, Mm -hmm. he had 34 times he missed the bet out of the 112. So he made 78 bets. Okay. Right. Okay. I got you. So so he he forgot to do it. How many times? 34 times. But he actually made the bet. 78 times. Got you. Okay. Okay. 13 times, it was either a 3 or an 11. Okay. For a total of Uh $1,040 after he took his bet down. Yeah, yeah. Seven times, it was either a 2 or 12, so that was 1,085. Mm-hmm. So there was 20 times he won his bet. Okay. Out of the 78 times he placed All it. All right, okay. 
So he had a net Mm -hmm. profit of $565. Ah, so he won on the bet. He won on the bet, $565 for the night. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he was ahead for craps that night, but less than 565. That's right. His total profit for the night was actually under that $500. He right. won. He won. But it was under $500. So what you're saying Had is Had he not made those bets, ah. he would have lost for the night. Gotcha. So those bets are what caused him to win. Okay. And what this shows us mm-hmm. is that making stupid bets yeah. sometimes works in your favor. Yeah. I guess yeah. I have to so, admit yeah. to that. It was <laughs> So the I, I, math yeah. does not always turn out as it's supposed to. Yeah, I I was the guy, <laughs> if you haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, isn't that funny? It really was. It was the one ret- night I was tra- loving it. <laughs> I was loving it. I was fuming <laughs> because I, I did proved not, your point. Yeah, but I, I proved your you point. You proved my point. But had I done your way yeah. instead of my way, yeah. I would have won money on the yeah. night when I lost. <laughs> It was unstinking believable. <laughs> I am going to keep this little piece of paper yeah, here in okay. my wallet yeah. for the rest of my life. <laughs> okay, good. And, and you're going to pull it out and just fume of it. Yeah, like, like, mean, the, like the other slip of paper you threw away from last week. Right. This one you're going to keep. This one I'm keeping. <laughs> and every time I'm having a good day, I'm going to pull this out <laughs> and it's going to knock me back into reality. I mean, so I can either look at this paper or I can check the National League West standings. (laughs) Those are the two things that bring me back to reality, Mark. All right. Very good. All right. Well, thank you for your craps lesson, Dr. Mike. (laughs) You're welcome. And thanks to everyone for listening. (laughs) Good night. Cajon? That's the anus of San Diego.